News 3 Now at 10. Thank you for joining us tonight. Wisconsin now has more than 4,600 confirmed cases of COVID-19. And the death toll now above 240. Milwaukee's health commissioner says officials have identified seven people who appear to have contracted the coronavirus through election day activities. Six of those cases involve Milwaukee voters and one is a Milwaukee poll worker. The Dane County Jail will begin facility-wide testing for both inmates and essential staff after 16 newly discovered cases. Among inmates, Maddie O'Neill spoke with a family who says their loved one loved one is among them and Maddie joins us downtown near the jail Maddie so this decision for facility-wide testing comes after four inmates in the same pod in the public safety building tested positive over the weekend. So then they tested the rest in the pod, 22 inmates. Of those, 12 were found to be positive. So that brings the total number of positive cases in inmates up to 26. Six deputies have also tested positive, but soon the National Guard will be helping out to make sure everyone is tested, inmates and essential staff included. It's very stressful. Chantel Washington's family looks forward to his phone calls from the Dane County Jail. But Monday arrived with bad news when the inmate told them he has COVID-19. He has seven sisters and, and, and three brothers, so they, we're all concerned. We scared, man. We been praying. The Chicago family says Washington told him he'd been put in a solitary confinement cell, and they're worried he's not getting the medical care he needs. We take our responsibility to pro protect and provide a safe and healthy environment very serious, and we're doing that. Dane County Sheriff Mahoney says that means a 24-7 medical team, no outside visitation, plenty of masks, and high-tech disinfecting equipment, along with paying inmates to do additional cleaning. Officials have also worked to cut the jail population in half to just about 400, already releasing inmates who meet the criteria and are considered safe to be released. In an attempt to do social distancing, but even then it's difficult. That's because Mahoney says they're confined by space in the aging jails. With a current setup, some inmates diagnosed with COVID-19 are placed in solitary confinement cells while still receiving the same care and treatment as others. Mahoney says the county's new plan and jail set to open in 2024 that has a tower with hospital style housing would have been able to better contain the virus. The infrastructure that we have, we're doing the best that we can, but we can do better. While it's too late to contain the virus from inmates already infected, the Washington family has a plea going forward. We're just pleading for help for our, for our brother to just get the help that he needs. Of those inmates who recently tested positive, 10 of them didn't have symptoms. Mahoney says group quarantine options are possible for those who have tested positive. Now this facility wide testing will begin as early as Friday. Republican leaders of the Wisconsin legislature are asking the state Supreme Court to block Governor Evers' order to extend safer at home until May 26th. Assembly Speaker Robin Voss and Senate Majority Leader Scott Fitzgerald asked the high court to take the case directly. It's a move that would skip lower courts and get a final ruling sooner. This evening in a teleconference, Governor Evers was noticeably upset, saying this move is purely political. In Wisconsin, as we see now, it's all about legislative Republicans seeking power. In a joint statement, Speaker Voss and Senator Fitzgerald write, it is the governor who is abusing power, saying he has denied the people of the state a voice during this, quote, unprecedented administrative outreach. Organizers say a planned rally at the Capitol this Friday is still going to happen, even though their rally permit has been denied. According to the Facebook event, more than 3,000 people say they're going to attend, more than 12,000 interested. Protesters want Governor Evers to reopen the state amid the coronavirus pandemic. And new tonight, we're hearing from healthcare professionals their take on the governor's bounce back plan. The plan lays out phases for the state to open back up. Governor Evers said we need to see 14 days of declining cases in order to start turning the dial. And Dr. Jeff Potoff at UW Health says the plan is a good starting point. It closely mirrors the federal guidelines, uh, which are evidence-based, uh, created with scientists and folks who understand uh, pandemics. Uh, and I think it's a good place to start. Uh, it, it outlines some metrics, some things that we need to be able to achieve as a state. Potov said the plan provides some good reassurance for people who want to know some sort of plan, but that we should still not set a date on exactly when to reopen the state. 
Local hospitals are making changes to help make up for lost revenue during the pandemic. At Unity Point Health Meritor, the hospital says it will temporarily reduce hours for certain employees and also enact limited furloughs and salary reductions for executives. It's a decision they say they do not take lightly. As a system, we are managing the short-term and long-term impacts of this crisis, and we're taking the necessary steps to ensure we emerge in a position of strength. And at UW Health, employees in leadership positions will also be taking pay cuts to help offset lost revenue. Depending on the position, those cuts will range from 10 to 20 percent. UW Health CEO says surgeries have dropped 62 percent. That's about 5,800 procedures, resulting in a loss of around 350 to 400 million dollars. Next at 10, Vice President Mike Pence, who heads up the White House Coronavirus Task Force, visiting Madison workers at GE Healthcare today on the east side, praising their work in ramping up ventilator production. News 3 Now is the only Madison station to talk one-on-one -on -one with the vice president about the battle against COVID-19 so far and what lies ahead. Union, machinists, and GE Healthcare have saved lives. The vice president telling more than 500 Madison workers their efforts are saving lives. Even before uh, the coronavirus epidemic had impacted our country, in a significant way. This this company, these workers were already stepping up. Ventilator production here has ramped up, doubling since the pandemic started with plans to double again by June. Because of hardworking people like those here at GE Healthcare, no one who has required a ventilator in America has been denied a ventilator in America. We set all of that in, into motion. And, and from what News 3 now has heard from local care providers, that is true. But concerns remain about the need for protective equipment. And more specifically, we asked the vice president to address the need for testing supplies. As uh, I told the all governors all across America yesterday, Eric, uh, we're confident that we have a sufficient amount of testing all across America today for every state to enter phase one. Remember, the testing in phase one is that we want to test people that have symptoms of coronavirus and we want to deploy enough testing to be able to, to watch after people in nursing homes, in long-term care, in other vulnerable communities. While the economy continues to suffer, Pence's visit comes amid legal wrangling between the governor and state Republican lawmakers about when to open things back up. The uh, governor extended his favorite home order until May 26th. Is that too long, in your opinion? How do you consult with the governor of Wisconsin on when we can start reopening our state? We understand the desire of people here in Wisconsin to open up as soon as possible. And we're going to continue to work with your governor and governors around the country to provide the data, to provide the information as we track the progress to do that as soon as it's possible. While offering no opinion on Governor Evers' apparent adherence to federal guidelines on when to open things back up, Pence says he and his task force are doing everything in their power to look forward months down the road. And our first objective now, Eric, is to is to put the coronavirus in the past just as quickly as we possibly can. But make no mistake about it, um, that as we do that, we're we're laying the foundation to be able to to deal with any future outbreak of the coronavirus, most especially if it was to recur in the fall and winter of next year. Now, more than 40 employees from GE Aviation Facilities in Indiana and Ohio have been relocated to help with the added production here in Madison, and the company is still looking to hire more. The U.S. Senate has approved a $482 billion funding package aimed to help small businesses and hospitals. The agreement was passed by a voice vote after days of negotiations between Congressional Democrats and Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin. The bill now moves to the House. Overseas, two world-renowned events have been canceled today. The latest fallout from the global pandemic, Germany will no longer host Oktoberfest in the state of Bavaria. The Bavarian prime minister says the state has been the worst in the country to be hit by coronavirus. More than 37,000 cases were reported as of yesterday. And in Spain, the city of Pamplona has officially announced the cancellation of the nine-day festival in San Fermin. The most widely known event, the running of the bulls, attracts around 
around a million spectators each year. As of today, more than 204,000 people in Spain have contracted the virus. All right, let's go to weather now. A bit of a chilly day. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti joins us with our first warm forecast. Gary? But at least we had sunshine all day today, so it actually wasn't too bad of a day. Let's take a look at the time lapse from the WIC Sky Cam showing a beautiful sunrise this morning and very little in the way of cloud cover throughout the day. By late afternoon and early evening, started to see some clouds develop. Uh, right now, skies are cloudy and we're seeing some light rain and snow showers move in from the north and west. Not everybody will see them, but with temperatures right now still in the uh, in the 30s and 40s, I don't think anything will stick to the ground. High temperature in Madison today, 49 degrees. It was a little warmer to the southwest, a little colder to the northeast. Right now, Madison's still at 43 degrees. We can see some 30s north and east of Madison. By morning, we'll be down to the middle 30s as the rain and snow showers end. Look for variably cloudy skies tomorrow and a chance for some showers and thunderstorms, especially in the afternoon and the evening. It'll be milder with a high of 63, but cooler weather and shower chances return later in the week. I'll have more details on weather in a few minutes. Gary, thank you. The woman facing charges related to the escapes of two prisoners from Columbia Correctional Institution last week made an initial court appearance today. 46-year-old Holly Zimdahl was a civilian kitchen worker at CCI. She faces two felony charges, party to the escape of a criminal and delivering illegal articles to an inmate. Today in court, a $10,000 signature bond was set. And new at 10, Highway 59 in Milton was closed for about 30 minutes tonight after a structure fire sent heavy plumes of smoke over the roadway. It could be seen coming from along Lake Koshkanong, a campground area there. There's no word tonight what caused it. The American Red Cross giving us an update tonight about the fire on Muirfield Road on Madison's west side over the weekend. They say last night, 37 people from 13 of those units there, which is about half of those affected, stayed at a local hotel as part of the response effort set up by the Red Cross. Amid the pandemic, they say all volunteers and displaced residents have gone through health screenings ahead of any time spent at the hotel. Still to come tonight, a local high school senior doing something good for families in her community, plus adapting to a changing business model, how a local coffee house is able to up, pull it off. Stay with us. Here at Weedman Lawn Care, we believe that your lawn should be a place where memories are made, a source of pride, relaxation, and fun for the whole family. That's why we proudly offer a child and pet friendly program so you can enjoy a healthier, greener, weed free lawn without sacrificing peace of mind. Our program offers effective, targeted weed control, and our golf course quality fertilizer creates a beautiful outdoor space. Don't your kids and grandkids deserve a Weed Man lawn? Trust the lawn care experts. Trust Weed Man. <laughs> together makes us stronger and Ford is built to lend a hand. Contact your Ford dealer, an essential part of your community, to find out more about home delivery and other vehicle service options. After all, you have a lot to take care of. Let us help take care of you. Find out more at Ford.com. Right now, qualified buyers can get 0% financing for 72 months, plus three months deferred payments on select 2020 Ford models. To our pick and save associates, from the long hours and late nights, for the miles traveled and the shelves restocked, for making a difference in our customers' lives, for doing so much more than your job. Everyone at the Kroger family of brands and our customers say thank you. In a time when daily life feels a bit uncertain, your hard work is keeping America fed. Pick and save, fresh for everyone. Why O-Cedar? Because when I get home, we like to play crocodile on the floor. O-Cedar Easy Ring removes over 99% of bacteria, even with just water. Easy and truly clean floors. O-Cedar, it feels great to feel at home. The law offices of Jingris, Thompson, and Walks are here to support our community through this challenging time. We thank everyone bringing invaluable services to our neighbors. The Jingris, Thompson, and Walks team remains available to assist in any way. At Papa Murphy's, we know family time is more important than ever. So we're helping by offering online ordering everywhere and delivery and curbside pickup where we can, so you can keep family time as normal as possible. Papa Murphy's, we're in this together. Southern Wisconsin is a vibrant, diverse community with great stories to tell. And I'm looking forward to bringing them to you during my favorite time of day, morning. I'm Chris Stanford, and I'm excited to be joining the News 3 Now Morning team. 
Welcome back. A local coffee company is managing to stay open and keep its workers during these uncertain times. Beans and Cream Coffee House in Sun Prairie normally has three locations. Two of them are still open. Managers say they're able to keep their staff working by making some changes to how they do business. One location on Main Street there has been transformed into a drive through only with a revamped menu and lower prices. While the second at UW Hospitals American Center remains fully open, providing a sense of normalcy for hospital workers. The UW Hospital actually reached out to us as things started to happen, as they started to close their clinics and reschedule um, elective surgeries and asked if we would consider staying open, that they felt like we, um, our presence really was a morale boost for their staff. Now he says when the COVID-19 emergency was first ordered, he even interviewed his employees to determine who was more dependent on their paychecks and gave priority hours to those workers. A senior at Broadhead High School is doing something good to help families in her community and support the dairy industry. Just seeing all of the stuff on social media of farms having to dump milk and coming from um, a dairy family, I guess it's just kind of heartbreaking to see all that um, kind of go to waste. So I wanted to make sure that um, to help them and just like help out some of the families in our community that just cannot afford fresh milk and cheese. Skylar Stanley is a member of Future Farmers of America and got her FFA team to buy gallons of milk for local families. Broadhead High School offers free sack breakfast and lunches. And now each family will also go home with a gallon of milk and a pound of cheese. Stanley says the FFA helped 80 families last week and 94 this week. They've secured donations to keep the program going until the end of May. Celebrity remodeling couple Chip and Joanna Gaines are gearing up for a four-hour preview of their Magnolia Network. The network's scheduled October launch is being pushed back because of the pandemic, but the couple is giving viewers a taste of what's to come this weekend. It will air Sunday at 4 p.m. Central Time on the DIY Network. Magnolia Network is a joint venture between Discovery and the Gaines' wildly popular lifestyle brand, Magnolia. And you know who loves Chip and Joanna? Gary Canalti. After a breezy, chilly Tuesday, we're turning up the temp a bit tomorrow, right, Gary? Yeah, it'll it'll turn milder for tomorrow, but at least we won't have any severe weather. That wasn't the case 53 years ago today. A major tornado outbreak in northern Illinois uh, got me interested in meteorology at the age of five, and a number of other meteorologists count this as the thing that really pushed them over the top to become a meteorologist. But it was a tragic day across northern Illinois. Tornadoes started in Missouri and southeastern Iowa and swept across northern Illinois through the Chicago area and up into Michigan. One of the tornadoes passed through Belvedere, hitting the high school right as school let out. 13 fatalities at the high school or buses were blown a quarter of a mile into the fields behind the, uh, the school. And another dozen fatalities happened when a supermarket roof caved in. The uh, tornado headed up into the area around Woodstock, Illinois. You can see one of the school buses there at the top just sheared off. All the fatalities were kids that were on the school bus waiting for their kids or for their uh, brothers and sisters to come out of the high school. Another F4 tornado struck uh, Lake Zurich, Illinois. This one only had one fatality, but it actually threw a, a big air conditioning unit over a half mile. And the worst tornado of the afternoon happened at around 530. It traveled from Homewood through Oak Lawn and the southern, sub, uh, southern part of Chicago. 33 fatalities there. The tornado went right out into Lake Michigan bringing 100 mile per hour plus wind gusts to the 68th Street water intake crib off of the uh, Lake Michigan shoreline two miles out. This is the picture at 95th Street and Southwest Highway. A lot of the fatalities there were people that were trapped in automobiles as the tornado roared through. They were stuck in traffic and literally had no place to go. Three things you need to know in our forecast. High temperatures will be back in the 60s for tomorrow, but it'll be a brief warm up because we'll see off and on showers from tomorrow afternoon through Saturday uh, night, and that'll bring high temperatures back in the 50s from Thursday through Saturday. Tonight, you can see uh, showers coming in from the northwest, a mix of rain and snow showers because temperatures are in the 40s south and west of Madison, upper 30s to the north and east. But this will move through pretty quickly. After that, we'll see that warm up because the upper level winds start becoming a little more westerly, at least for a little period of time. That shuts off the colder air coming in from Alaska and Canada, but uh, that'll be a short-lived thing because the next weather system will buckle the jet stream again and start bringing cooler air for the end of the week. As we look at the surface weather, 
weather map, there's a warm front out to the west. That's what's generating the rain and snow showers as the milder air goes up and over the colder air near the ground. As we zoom into the Midwest, you can see that front dividing temperatures that were today in the 70s, close to 80 degrees in some spots, even up into North Dakota, while our temperatures stayed very chilly, generally in the upper 40s. Our forecast for tomorrow calls for a high of 63 with a chance for an afternoon shower or thunderstorm. On future track, the clouds will move on out after the rain and snow showers uh, tonight, then look for high temperatures in the lower 60s tomorrow. Could be a shower or thunderstorm chance tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening, then uh, clouds return tomorrow night and for much of the day on Thursday with high temperatures dropping back into the middle 50s. 7 to 10 day forecast, those temperatures stay on the cool side through the weekend, but by early next week, we'll see temperatures back to around 60 or a little bit above. Be some shower or thunderstorm chances midweek, but at least it won't feel quite as chilly it'll be as it'll be over the next few days. Yeah, we do need to see some warmer weather. We're inching towards May. It's not too far away. Let's get some warmer weather. Yeah, we got to turn the corner. Thanks, Gary. And coming up in sports, Taylor and Toppers, they're now teammates. Why the move to team up with the best running back in the draft was an easy choice for the pizza chain. Stay with us. News 3 Now First Born Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Get red hot savings with this week's Hy-Vee Hot Deals. Hy-Vee Choice Reserve Bacon Wrapped Sirloin Filets, only $1.88 each. Dole Iceberg Lettuce, just 48 cents. And Coke six pack bottles or mini cans, four for only $10 when you buy four. Only at Hy-Vee. Yeah, sure. I'm a home builder. I go to Nuns. Why? Well, my clients love them because they have all those fancy schmancy carpets. You know, like those smart strand ones from Karistan that are just astonishingly soft to the touch. I'm more of a concrete floor guy myself. That fluffy stuff just doesn't do it for me. But hey, my clients, they love this fancy schmancy Karistan carpeting. So we go to Nuns. Nuns, kitchen, bath, and flooring. During times like these, it's important to stay connected. The new normal isn't normal at all. But just because we're apart... Doesn't mean we're alone. We can reach out to old friends. Remind our family that we love them. Stay on top of business. Even if it isn't business as usual. Because we are resilient. No matter how much distance is between us, we will never let you lose your connection. U.S. Cellular has a network you can count on, which means you can do anything, even make a commercial. U.S. Cellular. Americans have been cutting the lawn for hundreds of years, but with TurfBot, the future of mowing is now. Our quiet, all-electric robotic mowers work around the clock to keep your lawn trimmed 24-7. That means less time spent mowing and more time spent enjoying. Equipped with LED headlights, auto-stop sensors, and anti-theft GPS devices, our mowers run safely with no supervision. Come home to a freshly mowed lawn every day for as little as $30 a week. Call today and get free installation when you sign up. TurfBot. On the cutting edge. Imagine facing Wisconsin's bitter cold winter without a warm home or the blistering heat of summer without power. Then having to make the tough choice between eating or meeting other basic survival needs. Unfortunately, over 200,000 of our neighbors in need will face this difficult decision with no place else to turn, including those who are now unemployed due to the COVID-19 crisis. For a hand up and help with your utility bills now during these difficult times, contact the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund today. Coming together makes us stronger, and Ford is built to lend a hand. Contact your Ford dealer, an essential part of your community, to find out more about home delivery and other vehicle service options. After all, you have a lot to take care of. Let us help take care of you. Find out more at Ford.com. Right now, qualified buyers can get 0% financing for 72 months, plus three months deferred payments on select 2020 Ford models. Get red hot savings with this week's hy V Hot Deals. Buy one eight count pack of ground beef patties. Get one pack free. Jumbo Honey Crisp Apples, just $1.49 a pound. And Kellogg's cereal, only $2.38 a box. Save on these hot deals and more, only at hy V. Jonathan Taylor made a career at Camp Randall, tossing defenders to the side on his way to the end zone. And now the former Badger is tossing dough as in pizza dough. Taylor signed a lifetime deal with Topper's Pizza, but not as an endorsement deal. He's now an owner of four franchises in Madison. Yeah, and for Scott Get Rich, the CEO of Topper's Pizza, this partnership was a no-brainer. His first reaction was something like, 
oh, I'd love to do something like that, but I, I kind of got to pay attention to football. And I'm like, I'm a pizza guy. I'll take care of the restaurants. You do your part. <laughs> He's like, all right, that works. We can do this. After a breakout junior year, Quintus Cephas decided to declare for the NFL draft, and the former Badger wideout knows he's got the body and the hands to make it in the league. He just needs an opportunity because getting a shot would do wonders for not only him, but his family. For me, it's just a mentality in attacking the ball. Um, you know, whenever the ball is in the air, I feel like it's my ball. And that's that mindset just takes me to having strong hands and going to attack the ball, knowing that you may not have a lot of opportunities, but I want to make sure I make the most of those opportunities. What's this process been like for you? It's a process that, um, you know, can change your life. Um, it can do so many things for you and your family. Uh, every time you're on the phone, it's with somebody you've admired or you've watched growing up. And um, it's just... It's amazing to be in this position. What do you want teams to, to know that they're going to get from you? I pride myself on being a leader, uh, just always leading by example. Whenever uh, I got somebody turn on the film and, and look at me, um, whenever cutting anything short, I want to be the first guy there and last guy to leave. What do you think your dad would say to you after you got the call or even before? Go and create a legacy, um, you know, and... You know, you all have the chance to make decisions to um, help myself in the future and be able to help my mother and my sister. The Packers already making moves ahead of this week's draft, and the team added <laughs> depth in their defensive line. You know, that wasn't what those guys looked like. Uh, after going undrafted in 2019, both Jamal Davis and Gerald Willis ended up with the Dolphins. Now the Pack... Uh, Willis is a, a defensive tackle, while Davis is an edge rusher. The Madison Capitals officially introduced Tom Upton as the new head coach of the franchise, and obviously after six straight losing seasons, the goal is to make some noise on the ice. Upton agrees, and so does his mantra, work hard and win. I'm not scared to talk about winning. I, th I think we need to talk about winning. You know, we need to expect it. We need to act like winners. It's not just going to happen. You, know, no, you don't just go out and win. It becomes a mentality. It's something that you need to constantly talk about, I believe, with the players and in your practices and in your video and things like that. Um, everything should be geared towards winning. And we're back after this. This is our home. We've never seen it look quite like this. But there's no mistaking it. And it's our job to protect it. Because the best people to fight for our communities are those within them. So if you've just bought a Volkswagen, or we're thinking of buying sometime soon, we're here to help with the community-driven promise. from Hy-Vee is even easier with the new Hy-Vee Mealtime To Go website and curbside pickup. Just order delicious meals online and get no contact pickup. Choose from Chinese, sushi, fried chicken, lasagna, enchiladas, burgers, pizza, many of your favorite sides, and more. Just order online at hyvee.com backslash mealtime. Then park in a designated mealtime spot and we'll bring your order out. Feed your family for less and order Hy-Vee Mealtime To Go today. Only your locally owned Cub Cadet dealer has genuine parts, accessories, trained service technicians, and the widest selection of innovative Cub Cadet products. We're here for you whenever you need us. With expert service and support to keep your equipment running at peak performance for years to come. And with great deals available, there's never been a better time to buy at your local dealership. To find a dealer near you, visit CubCadetDealers.com. 
My mom is 81, and I worry about her. So I went online and found the new Lively Mobile Plus from Great Call. If she ever needs help, she can just press the button. And with the Great Call Link app, I'll get an alert right on my smartphone if she does contact Five Star. With the fastest call response time, they'll assess your situation, confirm your location, and send you the help you need. Available at Walgreens or online at Best Buy or Amazon.com. AARP members get an exclusive discount on select plans. Together, we can do this. Our spirit is what unites us. It is what bonds us and reminds us we are all one. Which is why if you need a vehicle during this time, we are offering 0% financing for 84 months with no payments for 90 days. And the ability to shop and buy from the safety of your home. Better days are ahead. And Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram will help you drive forward. Get the facts with Reality Check, only on News 3 Now. Got a mild day coming tomorrow, but then temperatures will turn cooler through the weekend. We'll warm back up next week with some rain chances off and on over the next 10 days. All right, Gary, thanks a lot. Thanks for joining us for News 3 Now at 10. We hope you have a great Tuesday night. Take care. Now, a WISC-TV editorial with editorial director Neil Heinen. Unfortunately, the worst of times sometimes brings out the worst in some people. As we look out for each other during this crisis, it is imperative that we look out for our friends and neighbors who are especially vulnerable. Latinx leaders are telling us they are hearing from members of their community that some employers are violating safer at home orders and requiring their Latinx employees to report to work. That's dangerous and wrong. And sadly, there is great concern for sexual assault victims and survivors for whom staying at home is stressful and dangerous. The Rape Crisis Center and Domestic Abuse Wisconsin and Wisconsin Coalition Against Sexual Assault are all open and providing services to those who need them. All of us need to look out for those who are susceptible to being taken advantage of or abused. Help is available.